Okay, I'm back. Alright. So what I need to do is make an elevated jar to hold all this stuff in place. To do that, I need a jaw tall enough to apply force here. And pretty sure that's not going to make it. Although, I'm going to try. What all I'm trying to do right now with this uh, round, uh, this piece of pipe is hold that in the general area that it needs to be so that I can hopefully get a straight drill through. Because I need a straight drill through to uh, achieve the proper uh, well, resolve. I need to drill right through both parts, absolutely in the center of them. As all this stuff has moved as much as it has, I'm shocked and, and shocked and in awe that it actually appears to be where it was before. It's pretty amazing. So, hopefully, it'll be lined up enough inside that it won't be crooked when I'm done drilling it. thing I did, if you're wondering if it was already on center, which I didn't actually know, but if had I known it, there's another reason though why I needed that part there. That is, it's essentially a bushing of sorts, a drill bushing. And the reason is because without it, that slowed plastic down there could cause the drill bit to wander out of its path. And if it did that, well, I'd be in trouble then because the draw of the hole would be out of line. guarantee that it's in line, to be honest with you. However, wherever it lines up, as long as these two holes are in line with each other, that's kind of the most critical part of this. I just gotta hang on to that better because you can't have it wandering around and crawling out the hole.
Thankfully it did walk in the hole down below. Well, right. I guess I'm going to have to resort to another plan here before I destroy everything. relatively dull centered bit back in here and see if I can force a new center on the uh, bottom part. They're not going to be in alignment that way, but I'm going to try to force something to happen and hopefully I won't break anything because I need that screw essentially in the center of this hole no matter what. Essentially what I did is I kind of, this thing gets hot enough, I kind of melt it in, but it's kind of dull. But, uh, as long as I got the hole mostly in the center here, uh, my next plan, if I succeed, is going to be to, uh, epoxy together anyway. In other words, I'm not relying on the drill, uh, the screw. Now I've got the one fun problem of trying to get this lined up and drilled back in the center. And I may fail dismally, but I'm going to try it the hard way.
end of its expected lifetime in many ways. Because these holes like to wander a lot, I'm going to intentionally go up exactly one drill size at a time. That was 1 16th of an inch. The next one will be the next, the, last, the first size that I drilled with before, that's 5 64 This bit wobbles a lot, I'll shorten it up a little bit. <laughs> Beautiful thing about going in with just the next size up, a lot of times is, it kind of, so you say, sucks itself up in there, which sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes it's a disaster. It depends entirely on one thing. That is how uh, how strong the material is. Doing that with a soft plastic is not near as big an issue as doing it with a piece of especially soft metal. Where you do it with soft metal, you're bound to break a bit.
again. Just oversize them the one piece, not the other. That way, it'll go completely, hopefully, through one without catching it and then catching the other one properly. That bit. A little bent. A little bit bent. However, technically now if it's all the way up there, it's drilled too. It's just drilled snugly. I wonder if I can start this. Don't know if it's obvious that I was able to recenter the hole a little bit. It's not perfectly recentered, but it's somewhat recentered. There's the sloppy down here, my that's the bottom, is the first hole went through crooked, but then right through there, by redrilling it, I put a new hole through it. Unfortunately, coming in from the other side, <laughs> it got crooked too. And put a hole right in here. I don't know how obvious that is. I can. Let me see there. Yeah, I see it. There it is. So there's a hole right there. That's where it got out of whack going the other direction. So the part's not near as strong as it used to be. But again, the idea is to drive a drill, uh, drive this screw through there and with epoxy, bond it down. So, hopefully, um, I can get these two parts to mate together in alignment. We shall see. Uh, before I even take that out of there though, I am going to clean it off a little bit. And I'm going to wash my hands before I can try to take it out. Again, the reason I'm trying to clean it off it's because I plan on epoxy it all. Let that sit over there. I'll wash my hands before I try to extract that from there. And turn off the power. Because I won't be needing it anymore, even if I screwed up the pun intended. Because if I made a mistake on that cut, uh, position drill enough that it's not uh, straight, I'll just have to sand it off. Okay, now, I'm working on a strategy of how I'm going to try to do this. Um, it occurs to me I need to go to the house and get some more epoxy. Because uh, I think the epoxy I had here is empty. Let me see if there's any epoxy left in these tubes here. Oh yeah, there's some in that one. 
And... Yep, I should have just enough for this job before these two, these are, are done, empty. So, now admittedly, I do not know if it's going to bond to this nylon or not. This, if I remember correctly, is a urethane epoxy. And so, do not know if it'll bond to plastic or not. Okay. Free boil dust, do not epoxy heat over 200. So, so it doesn't, uh, waterproof and permeable, heavy duty epoxy. It doesn't say what all it can or cannot be used on, but uh, we're about to find out the hard way. Again, this ether being a fairly pure substance, devoid of any contamination before I use it, should hopefully ensure uh, a clean surface. Uh, I'm going to first, I'm moving it over out, out from under the chuck so I can work on it. I'm going to leave it in a device because I need it to hold still. And that little piece like that ain't going to hold still real easy. Uh, not in my hands by any means. However, what it can do, what I'm doing there, is with that in the vise, a really good strong hand that can hold better than I can hold it. And if all goes well. Now first thing I'm doing is I'm pre-driving it. The reason I'm pre-driving it is to see how well it aligns. If it goes straight in, draws all the way down without any problem, then I'll go ahead and pull it back up put epoxy in it and put it back down. Before I put it, epoxy on it though, I'm going to do something that occurred to me because I don't want it to stick to that plastic. But, I do want to use the, pla the, the PVC pipe as a guide form. In other words, I want to use the PVC plastic to hold it in place. So how can I do that, you see? without having it stick to it. Alright, now I have confirmed, I've written my my threads go the proper depth. Right there, that's maximum depth that I need. So, I'll pull that back out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a regular shopping bag. And I'm going to try, hopefully I'll succeed, to line, there should be just enough thousandths of an inch to line that piece of PVC pipe with the plastic so that if the epoxy sticks to anything, it'll stick to the plastic sheet, but not the plastic pipe that's my, if you want to call it, die, constrainer, mold, you can call it a lot of things I suppose depending on what kind of technical terms you're used to using. But for the moment, set that up here, leave all that where it's at, we'll pull this out, I say I'll pull it out, <laughs> may not be able to, uh, <laughs> I should be able to pull it out or push it out, I wanted to. Uh, plus, I need to get all the sprue out. There's a little bit of sprue in there, and that'll screw up the, the that'll keep the epoxy from sticking where it needs to be too. So I had to take it out. I can't just dab epoxy in there and hope for the best.
Okay, so, because it's in there really tight, I'm going to take a deep well socket, a small driver, there, and that knocks it loose. Now, I leave that right there for now. It doesn't matter if that's got grease on it, it's kind of better if it does. This matters because I need this piece to be completely devoid of grease, debris, loose particles of any kind. Of course, including the paper towel itself. Uh... Let me get a razor knife. Kind of knock some of this burr off of it. Okay, I got the flash burr, chip, whatever you call it, off of that one. Get it off of here. I don't even want that loose, fluffy garbage on there because that'll get in the way of a good, solid bond, of course. And even James Bond will get past that. All right. That and that, hopefully, are devoid enough of loose material. Do one more wash off with the... Uh, actually, i got to wash my hands again, too. Probably have to wash my hands five or six times during this. Any little contamination on my hands can ruin it, too. One thing I need to get right now is an appropriate stir stick for this type of application. Stir slash dauber stick. Put that on top of that. Get another can of spray cleaner here. certify that that is clean. In fact, I'm also going to clean the area where it's sitting so that it doesn't have any additional yuck on it. Alright, so those two parts are clean. I would use Teflon tape there except that uh, 
not dimensionally possible for me to convince it to go in that hole, being the type of material it is. It would do a great job if you could get it in there. I can't guarantee that I can even get this uh, plastic bag in there. But hopefully I can because I've got a better chance of getting the plastic bag in is all I can say. Because again, the idea is, is for it to go through and create a non-stick surface for the... Mm, it broke. Let me see if I can strip off a, a narrow piece of it that'll go in and feed in. Uh, it's fairly linear plastic, so just you know, common shopping bag is. It's resistant to tears in one direction but it tears quite easily in the other so where it's never impervious to tearing of course it's resistant A little further, a little further. Nope, cried. <laughs> I'm afraid if I try greasing it, that'll screw something up. I don't have a pair of scissors down here. I need to really clip this clean. Maybe I can use a razor blade and clean slice this anyhow. Kinda. The other thing is, is I don't want it any bigger around, really, than one diameter, if I can. And it's, well, way bigger than one diameter. Let me try this. Let me try pre-wrapping it. reason I don't want more than one diameter naturally is because of the fact that having more than one diameter will uh, increase the thickness and therefore the drag, the wedge, the jam if you will. Now that said, that's about two diameters on there, so again, I won't be shocked and appalled necessarily if it uh, fails to work. Although, I've got the end twisted together there, hopefully that'll help encourage it to stay in place. Got to slant the proper direction. See, I'm also using this piece as an alignment tool, of course, to uh, help increase the chances. Let's hang on increase the chances of it uh, okay I got it through it increase what I meant to say is, is to make certain I get the parts lined up best I can now I don't believe I can do this but I'm gonna try I'm gonna slice through the back of the plastic the baggie both sides and what I'm doing hopefully is making it where it's possible to remove the part without removing the lining
for two reasons. One, so I can put the epoxy on the part before poking it back up in there. And two, it actually enables me to fish this up a little further into the fish my protective liner a little further up into the hole because the uh, part <laughs> acts like a wedge on the on the on the um, liner which is fine per se when it's in its place but until it's in its place it's a complication. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not worried about actually cutting the nylon with the razor knife. For one, it's already got, um, it's already too hard to uh, cut it with anything else. In other words, it's really hard material, so it's not going to cut easy, no matter what you do. And two, even if it cut a little bit there, it wouldn't be enough to compromise its strength all that much. So I'm not really worried that much about it. Uh, Now, I'll leave that alone for a minute because I'll finish working on getting that in its proper position once I've gooped them both up. Fortunately, this is really slow setting epoxy. I think what I'm going to do, instead of trying to find something else to mix this in, I'm just going to mix it in its own tube because it's going to be the last of it either way. So, can't even guarantee how uniform the mixture is going to be. Let me get a screwdriver or something I can get down there in there with. Okay, well, instead of a screwdriver, I just had a little piece of steel about the right size for what I'm trying to do. I'm going to get my butt lifter over here, and I'm going to sit down. I'm going to mix this stuff up. Plop my butt down here. And yeah, okay. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but <laughs> I can't put my arm up here. I'll knock everything off. I I could rest my arm up there and have the thing in front of it, but not much any other way. Scoop all the. Part A and Part B, it doesn't matter which, as long as you have them both in one place, they're 
interchangeable by name since they're you know, one to one if they otherwise it would matter if they were like two to one or some other ratio Now I wouldn't try to argue if this was the best epoxy in the world because that's relative to a lot of things and opinions and applications vary but I'm pretty happy overall with it for what I've used it for and although I'm not for sure exactly what all they think it's good for I've mostly used it on plastic and it's pretty much done exactly what I needed it to In fact, almost nothing I've ever epoxied wasn't plastic. I think I've only epoxied maybe one or two items. <laughs> I epoxied a car mirror once. Uh, and I don't mean the glass, I mean the metal. Uh, to the car. I, uh, the screw hole was stripped out. I needed my mirror back on, so I just got me some epoxy and stuck the mirror on with the uh, epoxy and it stayed for as long as I ever saw that car hope that car is doing well it was in the hands of one of my friends and so again I hope uh, Now this uh, epoxy here might be a little out of balance chemically. In other words, I may have a little too much of one part and not enough of the other. And I hope that's not going to be a big problem because I just had what I had. Again, it's pretty impossible to do anything except mix it together and uh, with what you got. I suppose if one thought about it real hard they could have probably measured out one and put it in there uh, in the other or something based on uh, what I mean to say measure out one is uh, figure out which one you're lacking in and measure from the other one so that your majority of your measurement is towards the minority of your uh, uh, product that way because if you go the other way you know you're going to come up short uh, on a mix so if I've got one ounce on, in one can and I've got three ounces in the other can instead of putting one ounce in the, in the three ounce can I can take one ounce out of the three ounce can and put it in a one ounce can. That way I end up with uh, an even one on one mix and I just got two ounces of uh, unused material left over. Which admittedly one can say well that's a waste too. Well if, if the imbalanced mix fails to work that's a bigger waste because that's a case where you you know you've got nothing you you, you know spend it all on uh, if you spend all of it on on um, a failed attempt then it's a hundred percent screwed up waste you know a hundred percent failure all right now here comes the hard part I gotta pull this back my little sheath here 
unroll it. Hopefully I can get it back through the hole. Now, to some extent, I'm actually using the epoxy to stick the plastic together here. Now, again, i got to make certain I've got the right tip in the right direction. Okay. Um, really, not too sure I got it in there right. No, I didn't. <laughs> it acted like a lubricant and kind of made uh, it. Uh, the epoxy slipped on the plastic like like a, a heavy grease. And so that kind of ended up messing that all up. And maybe what I'd do is just get another piece of plastic, start over. I think I'll do that. That's gonna that's gonna have epoxy on it already, so I don't have to worry about redoping it. I'm just gonna get another piece of that plastic. Where do I drop it? There it is. That's why I didn't throw it very far away from me, because I figured as sure as anything. They all saying, sure, as you throw a thing in the way, you know you'll need it the very next day. Well, in this case, <laughs> it's a matter of minutes. Alright. So, what I'll do here is I'm going to make this quite excessively long. And I say quite excessively, it's, it's longer. <clears throat> and that'll give me a, a string of sorts to pull through the hole. Plus, I'm actually kind of using a little less thickness, which means it'll, uh, hopefully that will enable it to slide through the piece better. Admittedly, there's a little goop in there, but I think what I'm going to do about that now that I have this protected this way, is I'm going to put some oil in here. By putting a little oil in here, if I'm really careful, I won't get too much on my hands. Which I'll probably still be best to, better off to just go ahead and wash my hands. Uh, in fact, because this is a water soluble epoxy, I'm going to go and wash the part, get the glue that's in there out. And that way I can be sure. Okay, so since that's water soluble, it won't hurt for me to just put that in there wet. 
make certain I've got the slope going the right direction. Slips right on that way. Nice and handy. Easy peasy. Now, let's see if I can unroll this the way I want to. Of course, i got to figure out which direction I twisted it. Then, I have to start on the outside edge, which is this one. And bring that around, and then take this side, bring that around. Again, the only reason I'm using this is just so that the pipe doesn't find itself part of the product that I have to grind off later in the process of cleaning it up and stuff. Alright, at the same time also I'm hoping that that will allow me to pack some of this material in there good and tight which will help it to kind of mold in there, squish it in and <laughs> you squish it in and it'll squish itself out kind of deal. And what that should do hopefully, if all goes well, is that will uh, ensure that the part has maximum material support contact and the mold will shape the new epoxy plastic part of the project the uh, into the proper general cylindrical value so I don't have to have so much rework when it's hardened. So I expect it will be a little bit too large but as long as it's only a little bit too large and not like 500 yards too much material, I should be able to manage that. And uh, right, well, looks like the rest of that is going to be waste unless I have to redo this, which means whatever's on. If I have to redo it, that means whatever's on there's waste. But Either way, it's only waste if I fail the first time, or however many times. <laughs> it's only waste if I fail more than once. Um, well, obviously it's always waste if I fail. But, alright, that's down in there. Now, set this back in here with, where did I put that? I dropped it on the floor, didn't I? Thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it went on the floor. Probably bounced and rolled around and got under something. Because I know I knocked his head off. Uh, sure. uh, there it is. It went on the floor. I put it somewhere I did with the right thing for a change. Put it somewhere sensible. Strange. I must be losing my mind. Or growing one. I'm growing a brain. Look at that. Hey, my luck. I have a brain. I think. I hope. Right. That. I think I just screwed stuff up big time. So, before I screw anything else up, let me double check here. Maybe it's just that. Speaking of screws and screwing up, I think what it was is I just didn't realize how deep the... Let's see if I can get this started a little bit. Oh, I walked around with it somewhere and set it down. Oh, I knocked it down. <laughs> Alright, so, I will try to start that, see how far I can get it in here. Because the reason for doing that is to make certain that they stay together whilst I'm in the process of tightening them up. That way it doesn't accidentally slip down into a hole somewhere. Plus the plastic keeps the epoxy off of my brother's V-block so I don't have to clean additional stuff. Alright, now... Is that as far down as it's going to go? I think so. I think it's down against the root of the vise there. And that piece. We'll drive that down. 
Well, see, I'm going to leave the screw in it permanently. It's going to be there for life of the part. And if this part fails on me utterly, just try to have to figure out a way to cast one out of solid material, possibly epoxy. Just make a mold and cast it. And since I'd rather not have to do that, I could. Would not be easy. Would not be fun. Well, looky there. <laughs> I don't know if that's evident, but the hole that I accidentally drilled kind of worked like a sprue of sorts. It uh, puked out some of the excess epoxy. Now, because I have excess epoxy that I don't want either to have to clean up off my brother's machine or clean up off of the part, I am going to scrape it off while it's still, you know, soft. Or it hardens. I don't like to call epoxy wet, even though it's arguably wet, because that almost implies that it's going to dry, in a sense, when polymerization is not the loss of any kind of moisture or anything. So I don't like calling it drying. It's hardening. It's polymerizing. I just like to say it's polymerizing. Because that's what epoxies do. And I'm just using this to clean off the vice. A little bit did get pla pa plastic. Past the plastic. And uh, so... Yeah, that got that off of there good. And, yeah, I won't. it won't matter if the plastic gets stuck to it because I'll probably end up having to sand this thing into shape to some extent to get it to fit back to its original hull. But, uh, unfortunately, until that gives itself and gives me the green light, I am unable to use my welder because that piece is the middle of the operation of that switch. Without that, you don't got a switch. Therefore, you, it, you know, it's part of the circuit. So, that is as far as I can take it as far, right this moment. The old epoxy tube is all used up essentially it's unfortunately a loss of some material an inevitable waste of material because I can't use it on anything I don't have anything if I had had something and I known it I'd set it up there and do it both if it was possible but life being what it is, time and chance happens to them all.
Okay, well, so, that's as far as we're going to go on that tonight. We'll put away these tools. And I am going to give real good hard consideration to whether I need to do any more work on that one side and I may go ahead and let the uh, truck bed down to level here in a minute and if I do then that will set me up for a different weld which I uh, will still have to do with a small welder Seeing as the fact that the large welder is, well, being on being repaired. Okay. So all the palm tools and all, I gotta get the uh, Allen wrenches on here. I think I'll take my drill bits. I'm done with them. Pretty much done with everything. Now I'm just all I've got to do is wait for that to harden, set up, and do its thing, and then uh, take it out tomorrow and sand it if it's fully hardened. Okay, now let's see if we can move this camera without breaking anything, giving people more motion sickness. Put this sharpie right there. Right here. The other tool's way out here too. Joke about barking spiders and stepping on ducks. Don't need this. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. I'm going to do with, uh, I guess I don't need this and this either, or this either. I don't need these. I <laughs> ground that down so small it just was about the size of the arbor. About useless in a way.
<laughs> okay, now I got all this these parts that need to stay together in one place. Not a lot of them per se. But get that together like so. I'll put the grease up for now. I know where the grease goes and I know that I can find it real easy. Somewhere I had some copper anisease compound. I don't know if that'd be a good idea or not. But putting copper anti-seize compound seems like a possible way to uh, to increase the conductivity. Only problem is putting that anti-seize compound on there might lead to it bridging over more than one uh, contact which could be a problem instead of create, being a solution it could be a could create a problem so I don't know if that's a great idea necessarily So before I go and do something that might cause the part to be the, the you know part be destroyed, I think I'll wait and find better possible solutions than that first. And I don't remember which way this goes in here. Yeah, it goes in like that. The only reason I want it in there is just so that everything is just close in there as I can get for the time being. Now, hopefully I won't <laughs> drop the machine. It'd take a bit, but it could hypothetically be possible to damage that thing by uh, lowering it down on there. So, for the moment, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to worry about the bigger picture, which is the... Uh, careful lowering of that bed so that I can let me uh, oh I see what's going on the charger wire is uh, going around the leg and when I try to move it it's folding the leg up on me so when I move it it just suddenly wants to go from fully splayed to drawn out uh, drawn up all right let me pull it me yeah, outward okay now we're at maximum outward zoom all right now I thought I grabbed a can of starting fluid and I apparently put it down again so Until I can get the pump issue fixed on this thing, I hate using this stuff, but I'm kind of stuck with it at the moment. I think I'm going to take that block out and just lay it down on the ground. Lay everything else. I'm going to back this a little bit up. Get that block out. I can't back take it out right at the moment because the loader is actually on the block. In other words, I can't get it out from under there because the loader's pinning it to the ground and I ain't strong enough. Um, I guess I'll just leave this uh, on here for now. I don't feel like fooling around while I'm doing it. Don't think it's in my way. Let me uh, check my throttle. Probably still be in a good position here. What out there I do. Alright, we're in neutral, which 
can start without that. That's, I'll put that in safety mode for the moment. And, uh, tension the track. If I had a leaking valve like that, I'd replace it. But I ain't got no replacement valves for them. Cause they is 60 years old and they ain't no way I'm gonna get another set of them nowhere. And if that's some antique dealer had them, they probably want a thousand dollars for them. So I might take them and clean them real careful sometime, check them for microscopic grit. At the moment, I'm just going to live with a slow leak. Besides, some things leak out eventually anyhow, even if it ain't from the valve. Just time and seepage.
it's evident in the camera. I think so. But anyhow, the cable, the strap came undone. That hook right there that ain't but hanging out there was originally latched to that hook that's hanging right there. So hopefully, before it comes crashing down, it'll hook up there real gentle like, and then I'll be able to bring it down controlled like. Otherwise, uh, it might come crashing and bashing down, which might do damage to something. So it's all in God's hands, for sure. down. All the next bunch of work I'm going to do, I'm going to do right up on the front here, pretty much, while it's standing in that position. And when I do that, as much as I do for the moment, it's going to be okay like that, so I don't need to move it nowhere for a while. So I'm going to put the loader around and park it under roof in case someday it decides to rain. I hope it does decide to rain, but I certainly hope it my seat doesn't get rained on because I don't want a wet seat. So uh, I may be back to do more on this. I'm probably going to do some welding here in a bit. 
But I'm gonna take a break here now that I've gotten this down and I've gotten that part epoxy set in place. So I feel it's a good time for me to take a break and eat breakfast. And I hope the camera's picking up what I said because I'm talking behind the camera. So I'm sorry if my sound comes out little or none. Because I ain't no good at that. I'd just soon have the microphone omnidirectional so I can stand behind it. And be like talking over somebody's shoulder. But it doesn't work too well with some systems. So I'm going to pause it here. And I'm going to go ahead and park the loader. And then I'll be back later sometime to do some work. And I'll be working on... Uh, over will be the general areas that I'm going to work on next. Then when I get them done, uh, I need to get the two inch in place and I actually I need again I need another piece of regular bed frame to finish the top end or you know, the middle one. Finish in the middle one and then I need to flip it over to tie it all in. So We'll see you next time I'm on it, which may be tonight, which probably will be, but I'm going to go take a break for lunch, I mean breakfast.